This is a revision video for Unit 3 of AQA GCSE Chemistry and Combined Science, the Quantitative Chemistry Unit. Relative formula mass is fundamental to all of the other calculations we complete in this unit, so it's important that you do plenty of practice. There are lots of questions included in this video, and there's a link to an accompanying worksheet in the description below. By the end of this video, you should be able to define relative formula mass, also known as MR, and calculate the relative formula mass through a range of different compounds and molecules. In your chemistry exams for GCSE Combined Science or GCSE Chemistry, you're going to be given a periodic table to use in your calculations. Each element on the periodic table has two numbers associated with it. The smaller of the two numbers is the atomic number, and this tells you how many protons an atom has. The larger of the two numbers is the relative atomic mass. This is a measure of how heavy an element is compared to other elements. The carbon-12 isotope, which is the most common, most stable isotope of carbon, has a mass of exactly 12, and everything else is compared to this. But in reality, most other elements have a relative atomic mass that is close enough to a whole number that, at least for GCSE, it can be sensibly rounded. And so the copy of the periodic table that you have in the exams will have almost every element with a whole number relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass is measured in grams per mole. In other words, what is the mass of one mole of atoms of that element? If you're not sure what a mole is, then you can look back at the previous video, which was about Avogadro's constant. But for now, just think of it as a convenient multipack. Rather than saying, what's the mass of one atom, which would be absolutely tiny, we use the concept of a mole to give us more sensible numbers. Relative atomic mass is a really useful concept. But a lot of the time in chemistry, we're not dealing with individual atoms. Relative formula mass is conceptually very, very similar to relative atomic mass. The only difference is that instead of applying to an individual atom, it applies to something that has a formula. So that could be a compound, or it could also be a molecule that contains atoms of the same type. In order to work out the relative formula mass, you just need to add up the relative atomic masses of all of the atoms that are in the formula. For instance, if I look at the periodic table, sulphur has a relative atomic mass of 32. But sulphur most commonly exists as a molecule that contains eight sulphur atoms. So if I wanted to know how heavy one mole of those sulphur molecules would be, I could do 32 plus 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 32. Or more simply, I could just multiply 8 by 32. And this would give me a relative formula mass of 256. You might wonder why the symbol for relative formula mass is MR and not FR. This is because originally it was relative molecular mass. But scientists quickly realised that this was a really useful concept even for things that weren't molecular. So for instance, iron oxide here is not a molecular substance. It contains ionic bonds. But knowing its relative formula mass is still really useful. So we just changed the name. If I want to work out the relative formula mass of iron oxide, I first look at the relative atomic masses of the atoms that are in it. So iron here, you can see, has a relative atomic mass of 56. And in this, there are two ions. So I do 2 times 56, which is 112. Then I look at the relative atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16, and there are three oxygens, and three lots of 16 is 48. Then all I need to do is add them up to get 160. This next one is a molecular substance. Here's glucose. So carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, and there are six atoms of carbon in this molecule. Hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of 1, and there are 12 atoms of hydrogen in this molecule. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16, and there are six atoms in this molecule. And if I add up all of those, I get a relative formula mass of 180. One thing to watch out for is that sometimes in a formula, there won't be a number next to a particular element. And you should remember that if this happens, it's because there's only one of that element. And chemists are pretty lazy. We never write the number one not when we're doing ion charges, not when we're balancing equations, and certainly not in a simple formula. So here, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, and there is one carbon atom. And then hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of one, and there are four hydrogen atoms. So if I add those together, I can see that methane has a relative formula mass of 16. 
hopefully that's making sense so far and you're now ready to have a go at some of these calculations yourself. You do need a periodic table in order to be able to tackle these, but if you don't have one handy, there's a link in the description below. So pause the video and write down the relative formula mass for each of these compounds. First up was ethane, with two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. This gives a total relative formula mass of 30 grams per mole. In one mole of aluminium oxide, there are two moles of aluminium and three moles of oxygen, and that gives a total relative formula mass of 102 grams per mole. Each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, so the relative formula mass is 18. Then chloromethane contains a carbon, three hydrogens and one chlorine. One thing to watch out for is that some periodic tables will have this listed as 35 if they're listing the mass number rather than 35.5. You should get a relative formula mass of 50.5. Next, two nitrogens and four oxygens gives a relative formula mass of 92. Sulfuric acid contains two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of sulfur and four atoms of oxygen, which gives a total relative formula mass of 98 grams per mole. And finally, ammonium hydroxide, a little bit of a tricky one to finish with, 1 times 14 for the nitrogen, 5 times 1 for the hydrogen, not forgetting the one on the end, and 1 times 16 for the oxygen, gives a total relative formula mass of 35 grams per mole. The one thing we can do to make this slightly more complicated is to look at compounds where the formula includes brackets. You're probably really familiar with this type of formula, so you know that the 2 at the end here after the bracket applies to the entire NO3 in the bracket, but it's really common that when people are under pressure in an exam they don't interpret this correctly. So what they end up doing is including the wrong number of oxygen atoms in their calculation and they get the wrong answer even though they know perfectly well how to calculate relative formula mass. So as a tiny bit of an exam technique tip, I would really strongly recommend that if you have a formula that includes brackets, you write it out again without the brackets. So instead of having calcium NO3 2, we have calcium NO3 NO3. And that way there is absolutely no confusion in your mind before you start that calculation that there are six oxygen atoms. Then we just go through the same process we've already been using. Calcium has a relative atomic mass of 40, and there is one calcium in this. Nitrogen has a relative atomic mass of 14, and there are two nitrogens. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16, and there are six oxygens. And if we add it all up together, we get the relative formula mass. Here's one more opportunity for you to have a go at calculating some relative formula masses, and check that you're not confused even when there are brackets involved. Pause the video, write down some answers, and then we'll go through them together. We start out with aluminium hydroxide, and you might have chosen to rewrite it like this. So we've got one atom of aluminium, three atoms of oxygen, and three atoms of hydrogen. That gives a total relative formula mass of 78 grams per mole. Next up, calcium phosphate. Three calcium, two phosphorus, eight oxygen, 310. Magnesium hydroxide, one lot of 24, two lot of 16, two lots of one, 58. Gallium nitrate, one lot of 70 for gallium, and then three nitrogens with 14, and nine oxygens with 16, gives a total of 256. Ammonium carbonate is 96. Chromium hydroxide is 154. And lastly, we've got some copper sulfate crystals, so basically what this formula is telling me is that for every one mole of copper sulfate, there are five moles of water molecules associated with it to make it crystals. So this gives us 249.5 grams per mole. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling really confident in calculating relative formula mass, as this is a fundamental concept for the rest of the quantitative chemistry unit. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Chemistry videos coming soon.